today on Ask This Old House. This rain chain is both decorative and functional, and I'll show you how to install one. Oh look, isn't that gorgeous? There's a right paint brush for every job. I'll help you to pick the right one. I'll replace an entire bathroom vanity, cabinet, countertop, sink, and faucet. And I'll show you some options to get a professional looking closet at a DIY price. Sliders, hangers, everywhere. I and mean, they're huge, although back in the day, I mean, these things were pretty modest and small. Closets were small. People, I guess, didn't have a lot of clothes like they have today, but I remember we used to put some... <laughs> hey there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to Ask This Old House, where we love hearing from you about your house. So make sure you keep your emails coming. Hey, good morning, Tommy. Hey, Kevin. How are you? All right, where are you off to? I'm off to the home center. We've got some emails about people trying to organize their closets, so I'm going to go see what they have. Perfect. All right. Well, since you're asking black, sweet, I'll take uh, one. Yeah, right. Don't yeah, hold yeah. your breath. Are you getting your coffee? I am checking emails, and i got to show you this one. So I got an email from a lady who has had a vanity in her living room. She bought it seven years ago. <laughs> it's been her living room ever since. That's been there for right, seven years? It hasn't been up against the wall. It's been in the middle of the living room. How does she explain that? She doesn't in the email, so I'm gonna head over there today and just check it out a little bit. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> All right, and uh, Roger, where is he? He was here earlier. I don't know. I think he's on the road already. Oh, I wonder what he's up to. Hi, Tricia. Hey, Roger. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me over. I have to say the house is absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. We just are really at the end of a three-year renovation. We were doing the inside, and now we got to the fun part, which is putting the paint color on. The only thing is, it used to be dark green. Yeah. Now it's this beautiful color. It's light, and you can see we're having some splatter problems. Yeah. Well, part of it may be from this bed. This bed is just absolutely raw soil. I mean, at the very least, I'd love to see it cleaned up and put some mulch down. Yeah. That'll help the plants, but it'll help the spattering a little bit, too. Okay. But the biggest thing is, where's the water coming from? Now, you've got some downspouts here. There's none over here. We were having a problem. There were never gutters here before. And the water was just coming right off the roof and down here, creating some splatter. And so we had a gutter put in about a couple weeks ago. Okay. The gutter's installed, but it needs a downspout to go with it, and that has to be anchored. If they ran it back here to support it here, it would be right in the middle of the window. I know, not a good solution. And they ran it out here, they don't really have a place to support it, so that's not an option. And if we put it on the outside, it's right in the middle of your beautiful porch. Yeah, and we really didn't like that. That was originally what they were thinking. Well, I have an option I think might help us out. Okay, Come great. take a look. So, Tricia, this is what I brought you. This is called a rain chain. It looks pretty, it looks almost like a water feature. It does, but it's gonna hook up into the gutter and hang down. When it rains, the water through surface tension is just gonna hold on here, travel all the way down to the ground. Comes in different shapes and sizes, so there's really a big choice for this. Okay. But it won't completely stop all the spattering. Uh -huh. So what I wanna do is find a way to control the water a little more. And what I'm thinking is that the chain would come down from up there and go down into this pot. I'd like to clean it out and we'll run the chain in and put some stone in there and that'll allow some of the water to come out the bottom and some the top, but very easy with little force. Oh, it sounds like it'll really look nice. Yep. How do we start? As usual on one of my jobs, with a shovel. To get started, we'll dig a hole about 30 inches wide and six inches deep. We need to make sure we have proper drainage. To do that, we'll fill the hole with three quarter inch stone. We'll drill holes in the bottom of the pot as well. Once the rain chain is hung, we can put it in the pot and add more stone. So let's look at what we've done. We dug out the base and we put in three quarter inch stone and that's for drainage. Yep. Now in the pot, we actually filled it up to about here with a three quarter inch stone. Now I'm gonna take these river stone. They're beautiful, but they are expensive. So we're just gonna use them as top dressing in the pot. All right, that looks pretty good right there. 
Now we're going to take the rest of them and I'm just going to pour them out around here and we'll spread them. We'll just spread it out. I don't want to see any of that three quarter inch stone, so we'll just use these to hide it. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. And put it right in the corner for me. Beautiful, keep them coming. Lastly, we'll cover the whole bed with mulch to keep the splattering down. Can you give me one right here? Well, Trisha, we cleaned up the bed. We put some mulch in. We even put a few plants in. Vinca, you know that plant, right? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It seems like it has purple flowers, am yep, I right? Yep, and it's going to spread and cover that whole bed. But right now, it's time for the acid test. You all set? Oh, I'm really excited to see this. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, look, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Oh gosh, thank you so much, Roger, for solving this problem for us. You're welcome. This worked out absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Really good looking, Roger, right? Yeah. Clever solution for that it area. Worked out well. Perfect yeah. for that area. And obviously, you can pick different styles, maybe custom made, a whole bunch of different choices yeah. to choose from. They're all functional. Water comes down and works its way down to the bottom, but I love the fish. Of course, you do. You didn't even have to catch it. So, look at this just little flower petals, maybe uh, catches it, runs it all the way down. Yeah, pretty neat. So, I'll admit, it looked good, mm -hmm. but I could tell that there was some splatter. And I'm yep. thinking in a big rain compared to a beefy gutter, that's not going to be sufficient. Right, and that's why we used it here. This is a small section of roof that we could that's collect. Right. Yes, you're going to get a little splatter, but it's going to slow it down. And by slowing it down, it won't do as much pushing of mud up against the house. Right. And uh, you also took the time to secure it because when it rains, the wind's going to be going. You don't want these swinging all over the place. Exactly. And we had a couple of pots there to use as anchors and it worked out really well. You can use any sort of container on the bottom to do just what you said. Keep them from blowing around in the wind. It gives you a nice base for drainage as well. I like it. Nice worked one. out well. Yeah. Thank you. Marrow, the painting projects at home that a lot of homeowners actually take on. Um, it's a very popular project. Although when they go down to the home center to buy a paintbrush, it can be overwhelming. And I know that when you're walking through the aisles picking a paintbrush, you know just what to get. Exactly. Let me tell you this. When you see this brush, mm -hmm. this is natural hair. Good okay. for oil-based paint. Sometimes we call them a china bristle too? China bristle, same thing. All right, so oil. And if we put this into a latex or water-based it's just a disaster. It's not going to do anything to it. Okay. Okay. Then we have the synthetic hair. Some people call it synthetic blend. Yeah. This paint goes with everything. Or oil-based paint, water-based paint. Right. Okay. It does the work. So the material is critical. And we don't use a lot of oil. I mean, we still use oil, but not much of it. So we could actually almost do away with the china bristle and just go for synthetic. This one is out. This one does everything you need to do. When are you using a foam brush for paint? Because I think of these as things for maybe stain or, I mean, when does this come in handy? This foam brush is one time use, good for touch ups. Oh, and say touch ups, you can dab the paint into the walls without making huge stroke marks. So we're not actually dragging this back and forth. Not dragging so that, you're just dabbing nice and smooth. Okay, get the right material, probably synthetic. Synthetic um, is the way to go. The other thing that's on the uh, wall, the aisle there, are the shapes, right? We've got them angled and then we've got them cut straight. Okay, we have this angle brush, what we're using for cutting yep. around doors and windows. And then you have the flat where you do large areas that needs a lot of more coverage. So if you're painting the side of a house, you're going to be using this in the field. If you're painting the exterior of your house, the siding or the clapboards, yeah. you're going to use a flat. Okay. Or if you're doing a deck, you're going to use the same flat brush. Right. If you're cutting in, if you need precision, you're always going with the angle. With the angle brush, always. Okay. Uh, the material, shape, what about size? Because they come in a whole bunch of different There's sizes. There's a different size, as you can see. You always try to match the size of a brush with the surface you're trying to paint. Okay. 
So something like this is going to be used where? So if, let's say you paint a window sash, uh, this will do the work for you. You've got the little wood muttons, and so you're going to go with, uh, what is that, Probably inch one, and a half? Inch and a half sash. And if you're going to do the casings around the window, if the trim, the, case, the baseboard? Correct. If you're doing the case, the two and a half inches is the best. That's the one to go for right there. That's the one. Okay, cool. And then uh, let's talk quality because, boy, I tell you, it is tempting to go in there. When you see paintbrushes that cost as much as $15 or more, to grab the $2 brush and say, ah, you know, once or twice I'll use it and I'm done. You're completely done. Yeah. You don't think so? I don't think so. I always go for the good quality brushes. They because, are built better. Yeah. And you can see here, even the ferro is different from the cheaper brush. Well, I mean, it's true, right? Because, I mean, if you use these, you do end up with some of these bristles in your paint job. Some of them get left behind on the surface. And you then, like you say, that. I mean, look at this ferrule, right? Not much to Correct. it, just pressed in there. This one. What's that material? This is copper. Right, very nice. And, I mean, you're going to reuse that brush a lot. A lot. For how long? I, for many times. As long as you take care of the brush, clean up nice, the brush will take care of you. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, next time I go to the home center, uh, you're coming with me. If I'm not there, you know what you look for. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Well, Donna, I just love your house. It's beautiful. Thank you, Richard. We've been here for 12 years, and this vanity has been here for seven years. I mean, that's what caught my eye in the email, you know, sitting here in a vanity with a top right here in the middle of the living room for a pretty long time. So what's the story? How'd that happen? Bill can explain it better. Hey, Bill. Well, Richard. Well, nice to see you. Glad to meet you. Big fan. Thank you. Uh, what happened? This project came at the tail end of a lot of renovations we had done to the house. We put in a new kitchen, first floor bathroom, central air conditioning system, and hardwood floors. And right before we were to get rolling on this, the house got robbed, and we just totally lost interest in doing any more improvements to the home. Well, I can relate. You know, when I was a kid, I remember coming home, and we see footprints in the snow, leaving the building, none going in. And we go in, and we found we've been cleaned out. And it just feels so violated, you know. It just changes the way. So I don't blame you one bit. Right. So we took the money that we were going to use for this bathroom and invested it in a security system. Tighten up the building. Yes. Right. All right. Well, I don't think I came a minute too soon then. No, I think it's time. It's time. So let's get upstairs <laughs> and see what you got. Let's get this thing out of the living okay. room. Thank right. you, Richard. <laughs> Richard, this is my master bathroom. All right. So the existing vanity looks a little lower than the new one. The other one seems higher. Was that by design? Yes, it was, Richard. It was Good. by design. Good. All right, the other one we have downstairs also has drawers on the left-hand side. So let's be sure that'll fit. So drawers will be here. You can see the drains right here. That's great. And the hot and cold on the right. So perfect. All right, let me get the hot and cold off and we'll get rolling. Sounds good. Excellent. With the water off, we can disconnect the sink from the P-trap and then break the hose connections to the faucet. I'll use my utility knife to break the seal between the sink and the countertop. Since we're not saving this vanity, I don't have to be too fussy. Thanks, Richard. Now, the only thing holding the vanity in place is a few screws. Okay, just set it right there. You excited to have your new vanity I'm up here? very excited. All right, the old one had an open back, so I could just take it right away, but the new one is much better quality. It actually has plywood on the back, so I could just cut the whole opening. But you know what, you've waited this long, so what I'll do is turn the water off, cut these copper lines, cut the drain back so I can just drill the appropriate holes, all right? Sounds great. This existing drain is actually glued PVC.
and I want to cut it back, but if I cut right close to the wall, I wouldn't have a good place to tie on my new work. So I'm going to go to this point right here and cut the PVC. <laughs> So we have to transfer where these pipes are to the, so we can drill the holes in the back of our new vanity. So this is 20, 25 and an eighth. This is 18 and an eighth. And they're both 22 and 3 eighths up. All right, now he's going to cut the holes. Excellent. Okay, so I've drilled the holes. Let's just get it into position. That's pretty good. With the vanity nice and level, we can screw it into the studs. So the valve I've chosen for this is actually a solderless connection called a compression connection. It has a nut and a ferrule. So the nut goes onto the copper pipe that I've cleaned. Then a brass ring called a ferrule goes onto it. Now when I tighten up this nut against that thread a lot, I'll actually compress and deform that ferrule right into the copper pipe. All right, so here's our granite countertop. It's actually upside down, and I love the sink you've selected here. This is a china bowl, but it's an under-counter mount, and so we need to make a nice seal right here. So I'm going to use silicone caulking to go right around here. These clips will actually secure the sink to the countertop, and I love that the countertop company is already pre-drilled All right, Donna, so the sink is mounted. Now we have to mount the faucet. It comes in three pieces. This is what it'll look like, the handle look like. This is the cold stem. There's another hot. And then the spout right here. But we have to make sure that it's a watertight seal, so if any water spilled on the countertop, it doesn't go down. So we're going to put some putty. But there's an important distinction. This regular plumber's putty has oil in it. And if somebody used that, it would leach and wreck the granite countertop. So we don't make, want that. We do not. So they make a special stain free for use on granite, marble, quartz, and sandstone. All right, so I'll do a little bead of that around each one. It's much easier to install the sink and faucet up here where I have room before we secure the countertop in place. You can see how that excess putty just squeezes out as I tighten up the faucet. So I'm going to tip this over, but before I do, I want you to see what goes on underneath the part of the sink you don't see normally. you got a hot and a cold, and they connect right here through these flexible lines. And this is the handles up above, so you get this full pressure all the time sitting right here. And when you open up the hot water, it will come through this little flexible tube and out through the spout. If you open up the cold, the same thing will happen on the other side. It will mix right here, go out through the spout. When you lift the stopper, you can see what happens. There's a knob up here. This will go up and down, and that'll make the stopper go up, okay? It's a lot easier to work on up here. It's easy to show it to you, too. Thank you for showing me. All right. Now let's tip it up. With the countertop secured to the vanity, I can now make up the drain connections in PVC.
Well, I tell you guys, I love it. I love the choice. I love the countertop, the granite, the higher height. What do you guys think? Great choices. You I picked it, right? Yes. <laughs> I love it. And you've been waiting long enough for it, haven't you? Seven years. Okay, give it a try. Come on, it's your turn. All right. So we got hot and cold. Everything's connected. Level plumb and square. But I do notice that the floor is a little bit ratty over there, though, and a little squeaky. I have the floor man on standby. We've unlocked you back into the remodeling world. Good <laughs> job. Bye, my dear. Enjoy. <laughs> So, Tommy, we're talking closets, and uh, I would imagine you have trimmed out a few of these in your day. I sure have. People go crazy for the closets. They got a lot of stuff to store. But when I was young, you usually had one small closet with a wooden cleat on the wall, a shelf with a pole under it. It's a pretty good solution. I mean, I guess the only problem with that is once the cleats are in, that's where your shelves are, so you don't have much adjustability. No adjustability. You know, the easiest thing is to mount these things like these. It's called standards. They come in all different sizes and different mm -hmm. colors. You can put a couple up here and move them over here, or you can get long ones and mount them to the wall. You have to screw them to structure, though, because that's what's going to cause them to stay on the wall. Right, and then once they're in, it's as simple as just sort of putting the bracket in so that you can hang the shelf on it. And this one, you can just go anywhere you want, so you anywhere can raise you those shelves and up or down. you can use a wide shelf or a narrow shelf. Right. And you can actually get the shelves pre-finished so you don't have to rip down plywood or get wide boards and paint them. Yep. And these are easy to clean. Okay. And the key here is that you're actually putting this stuff, as you say, into structure because it's going to carry all of that weight. Right. Now, here's a different way to mount them right here. This is a bracket that you mount to the wall, mm -hmm. and you find the structure and you screw into that. Yeah. Then you take the standard and you put it in this track. Now, this oh. allows you to move it anywhere you want it without worrying about these going into structure. This carries the weight, the adjustability comes from here. And do you still have to plug these into the drywall? Well, you want to put something in there. Usually you use a rivet like this. You yep. drill a hole, you slip this into the wall, you take the rivet and push it through there. Right. And that holds it into position so they don't swing. Just stabilizes it, but not carries the weight. That does it up there on right. the track. And they have all kinds of attachments that you can attach to the standards too. Let's say you want to mount ties or oh, something yeah. like that. Or a basket. Or a basket, uh, you know, if you want to put a pocketbook or something like that. In I there. was wondering where you kept your pocketbooks. Yeah, in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> then you have wire shelving like this. Mm -hmm. And these are come in all different widths and lengths. And here's one here where you can mount this uh, for you hanging your clothes on here so you can slide them. Oh, yeah. All you can hang your clothes right here and the hangers won't move. And so this just clips in so you can sort of make this any length you right. want. Right. Again, you it. have to, it's always good to try to mount it into structure with a bracket like this. You screw it into structure, you snap it into the shelf there. Yeah. And you want to support that front so you have to use a diagonal brace like this that goes Right. into the bracket there and mounts to the wall. And it's an easy project, right? You go down to the home center, you choose the style and the accessories that you want, and pretty much any homeowner can install these. Absolutely. It's a great weekend project. Yep. Right. Well, good information, too. Thank you for that. All right, well, we'd love to hear from you, so make sure you keep your letters and your emails coming. And until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. For Ask This Old House. So how many pocketbooks do you have? Uh... next time on Ask This Old House. Updating your kitchen doesn't have to mean a full renovation. I'll show you some options. I'll walk you through all the steps for a green, healthy lawn. And I'm headed to a high-tech shop in San Francisco that will show me some new ways to build it. The biggest concern with this machine is catching your material on fire, especially with a 400 watt laser like this. Wow. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.